Hey guys, you're watching the EJ Tech Show. I'm Sahil, this is Soham, and we've got a very, very, very special episode lined up for you. That's three varies, by the three. way. So I'm very excited. And the reason I'm excited is because of this. This is the Asus ROG Phone 3, hands down, the world's most powerful and fastest smartphone to date. This is what you would call a spec monster. Every spec that you can imagine, this phone has, and then some. And honestly, I wouldn't expect anything less from an ROG phone. Well, yeah, the ROG Phone 2, I think, set the benchmark really high. And this, the ROG Phone 3 has just been like, you know what? That's not enough. We can take this even higher. Mm -hmm. And then they've made something that I think a spec monster is somewhat, um, let's say, underwhelming. This this is True. this is Cthulhu. This is <laughs> this is the ultimate monster. There's nothing else that can, that can even come close to this when it comes to specs. Yeah, so if you've used the ROG 2 uh, before, uh, you're going to feel at home over here because uh, it's got uh, the same massive 6000 mAh battery that we saw on the ROG 2. Uh, you've got two USB-C ports over here. Uh, you've got dual stereo speakers. And of course, on the back, you have that famous ROG uh, logo that lights up yeah. and gives you all sorts of different pretty colors. And of course, you also have the very famous iconic air triggers here as well. So those basically double up as your extra controllers when you're gaming gives you that competitive edge. So you've got all the good stuff that we saw on the ROG 2, but now they've also improved upon all of that. And two really important features have also been included over here. This uh, may very well be the first phone in India, actually it is the first phone in India that comes with the latest Snapdragon 865 Plus processor. And it is also the world's first to feature 144 Hertz Super AMOLED display. That's a lot of firsts. That yeah. is a lot of firsts. ASUS just loves breaking benchmarks with every phone they create and especially in the ROG lineup. But before we move ahead, you mentioned a lot of things that it has similar to the ROG Phone 2, except for one thing. Oh yes, one, one thing, thing it's missing. Uh, oh, go on, tell them what's missing. Doesn't have a headphone jack. Doesn't have a headphone jack. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it is thick, but it does not have a headphone jack. Uh, so yeah, it's followed the trend that we've seen in almost every 2020 phone, uh, missing headphone jack. Uh, I don't know what to say because it is a gaming smartphone, yep. so I would want to see a headphone jack over here. Luckily, they do include an adapter in the box, yeah. so you get the USB-C to 3.5 millimeter And adapter. not a lot of uh, flagship smartphone makers do yeah, that anymore. No one's doing that. They probably did, their, did, sorry, did it with their first gen device and then after yeah. that they just dropped it off a cliff. Hopefully, ASUS will carry this trend on because they know how important actual headphones are to gamers, especially mobile gamers. Okay, so this, by the way, it's got some heft to it. It weighs 240 grams, which is a big number. So feel that in your hand and tell me if, how does that feel to you? Honestly, it is much heavier than conventional uh, smartphones. Like Although I don't, know what the pro I don't know what the problem is because I think I've become sensitized to heavy phones. It actually doesn't feel that heavy to me. So let's see, in the past three months, you've used the Samsung S20 yeah. Ultra. You Moto Edge Plus. The Moto Edge Plus. So all heavy phones. I'm all guessing phones, yeah. you're pretty used to it. I usually use, like, let's say, a OnePlus 70. So yes, this is significantly heavier. I mean, the reason so, also why it would be heavy is because of that 6000 mAh battery in there. Exactly. So that's going to definitely add some weight to it. The battery, the specifications, the 3D paper cooling yeah. system, the 6X larger heat sink. There's, there's a lot of tech packed in and it's not just surface level. Yeah. Like on the surface, you'll get all these really cool designs and the circuitry and that'll make you think it's a gaming phone. But under the surface, ASUS really does a lot of uh, wizardry to be able to extract as much performance as you can from a phone like this. You can actually monitor uh, your temperatures and yeah. practically everything else you want to monitor about your processor and about your GPU right through their game mode system. They mm. You can just pull it out of the, uh, from a left tab when you're gaming. You can just see each and everything from controlling things like your air trigger mapping to things like whether you want a crosshair on screen. Yeah, you can actually put a crosshair on screen. That's not something yeah. any phone I've ever used allows you to do. But at the end of the day, that's what it is. It is a gaming smartphone yep. before it is anything else. Obviously, you will get all the gaming centric features. Uh, starting at least with my favorite, which is the air triggers. So yeah. this is air triggers three. So we love the air triggers on the ROG 2, but this time around uh, ASUS has basically given it a more gesture feature. So you can now uh, swipe, you can now slide. And also if you want, uh, you can basically uh, add two functions to one so basically uh, multi-touch. Multi yeah, uh, so basically gesture. by doing that, you essentially get four controllers instead of two. Okay, so let's come back to the display, uh, 144 Hertz. Uh, refresh Mega. rate and of course you also got a one millisecond response time so basically you're entering pc gaming level territory over here i mean even gaming monitors 
offer you that much, but smartphones never did. But yep. now you've finally entered that territory. And that is just extreme. But then with this phone, everything is extreme. Make no mistake about that. But that's what I like about what Asus has done with the ROG phone series. That every year they put one other spec that suddenly then all other phones start yeah, to so, adopt. So even when uh, Asus ROG Phone 2, when they introduced uh, the 120 Hz display, they were the first ones to do that. And then now we've got OnePlus following them, Samsung following them. Exactly. And I'm sure by the time the OnePlus uh, 7, uh, 8T comes out, they, they might have the 144 Hz display as well. So these guys, they believe in first. Right? So yeah. Honestly, high refresh rates are something that just make the entire OS experience so much better. Whether you like the OS or not, it'll just make it so smooth. I mean, and so I mean think snappy. about it. It, it. Everything on the screen refreshes 144 times each second. So everything from scrolling, everything from interacting with the user interface, and of course to gaming, especially games that support uh, that format, yeah. the high uh, refresh rate format, it's going to be buttery smooth. And if you're a gamer, that's what you want. Now, in addition to that, you've also got 25 millisecond touch latency and you've also got 270 hertz touch response rate. Now, to put that into context, the iPhone 11 Pro only has 120 hertz uh, touch response rate. And of course, scrolling on iPhone is amazing. But now just double that, triple that, and this is what you get. So if you get your butt kicked in gaming, that's on you. It's not this phone's fault for sure. But you know, here's the thing about gaming smartphones and they have often been criticized for giving you everything gaming wise, but they kind of cut corners in other areas. And one of those areas which really matters to people is camera. Yeah. So they have been accused of that. Hey, you're giving us everything, but the camera isn't that great. Now, I don't know if that's the case with this phone yet because I haven't tested the camera. Uh, we're still uh, checking the phone out, reporting it through its paces and a full review will be coming up. This is more like a first impression type uh, story over here. but. Triple camera setup on this one with a 64 megapixel primary sensor. Now, as far as camera specs go, those aren't bad at all, but how that works with this phone's AI is yet to be seen. What sort of results it gives you during night, during low light photography, uh, during the daytime, that all has yet to be seen. Uh, I remember that when I reviewed the Asus ROG Phone 2, that had a dual camera, the same camera setup with a 48 megapixel primary sensor. And there was the same setup that uh, the Asus uh, 6C had as well. Yeah. Uh, and I was happy-ish with that camera performance. I mean, there's nothing to write home about, but it did the job just fine for most of your basic needs. See, honestly, with a gaming smartphone, you know what you're getting into when you're buying one. You know you're not getting it for the camera. You know you're not getting it for the subtlety or the modesty that comes with buying a gaming smartphone or lack thereof. But honestly, with an extra lens, it's more versatile now. With a higher resolution primary yeah. sensor, it's way more versatile now. And as long as ASUS has gotten their tuning right, there's only so much you can do wrong to make a setup that powerful yeah. to give bad results. Yeah. And I don't think that's going to happen. I think this is going to be far more acceptable camera than the ASUS ROG Phone 2. And I'm really looking forward to what we actually shoot with this. Yeah. So let's talk about pricing. And uh, by the way, during the time of making this video, we don't know what the actual price is because the phone is still to be launched in India. Uh, but I would imagine that it would not, it will not be as generously priced as the ROG Phone 2, uh, given the fact that uh, there's been an increase in GST yeah. and all the new components that uh, ASUS has put in here. So there will definitely be a price hike. Uh, I'm expecting it to be upwards of 45,000 rupees or even upwards of 50,000 rupees. I uh, don't know the exact price, but uh, by the time you watch this video, the launch would have happened and we will put a price graphics at the bottom and everything. Uh, but yeah, it's not going to be cheap. That's what I feel. Honestly, I'll just say this. If ASUS manages to price this competitively compared to phones like the OnePlus 8 Pro, the top level OnePlus 8 Pro, they're safe. Mm -hmm. Because they already know they're marketing to a slightly gaming-focused market. Segment, yeah. A little niche segment already. So they know they've got to compete with that. Well, yeah, it, there should be competitive pricing, but then again, I understand even uh, Snap, uh, Qualcomm has increased their pr prices. And this exactly. is the True. 865 Plus now, it's not the 865. So everything that you see pricing wise, also they have a fast charger in this box by the yeah. way. So that's also gonna increase the price. So it's so a lot of factors to consider and we'll see how uh, Asus prices it. I am really excited about it. I'm hoping it'll be competitive, uh, but even if it's not, then just remember this phone is offering you everything exactly. you can imagine. So it's crazy. But look, there's a lot of other features that uh, we haven't spoken about. Uh, this has Android 10, 
Uh, it's got Armory Crate that enhances gaming performance. It also has the X mode that enhances gaming performance. It's got a lot of other features that we'll be saving for our review. But all I'm going to say is this, as far as first early impressions go, uh, I remember saying with my ROG Phone 2 that that was a race car. And this, at least going by all the specs on paper, by all the features on the paper, this may very well be a rocket ship. So I'm really excited to put this phone through its places and we will be bringing a full review for you guys only here on Editor G, only here on the EJ Tech Show. So do stay tuned for that. So those have been our first impressions of the ASUS ROG Phone 3. We really seem to like it and we can't wait to get our hands down and dirty in this and just keep gaming for long hours. Um, if you like this episode, then please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Or alternatively, if you're watching us on the Editor G app, a big thumbs up to you. And do stay tuned to the EJ Tech Show. I'm gonna take that back now as well. <laughs> <laughs>